So this is the start of the trip out of Cuenca. We're heading to Loja and then followed by Vilcabamba. We're taking Andy's transit from here, which is gonna be the same company that we're using to go from Cuenca over to Colombia later on, um, if everything goes right with COVID. So right now, um, we're having some delays with getting the shuttle here. So we're kind of up in the air and hoping that the trip is gonna move forward. We were just learning that we might not have a driver or authorization to travel due to COVID-19. Made it onto the van. We're on our way to Loja here in a little bit and we'll record a little, some scenery along the way. But we actually are on the van right now. We a couple of French people and Kay and us. See those faces? That's fear, people. Yes, we got a driver, but I think he was a retired stunt driver from Hollywood. We were happy to be on the road, leaving an hour late. Now we were just praying that we are actually going to arrive alive. This driver was trying his hardest to show up on schedule, apparently. We watch him lean into the curves, see the crucifix go back and forth. We had almost three hours of this. We were passing people on blind curves. We were holding our breath most of the ride. Yes, we considered getting out, but unfortunately, if we got out, we had no further transportation to go back to Cuenca or to try to proceed on to Loja, since at this particular time with COVID, there was very limited transportation options for us to choose from. This driver also did not speak English. And generally, we don't really think he cared that he had passengers in the vehicle. We were stuck, we were with him. So we just uh, put our lives in Mario Andretti's hands. And he didn't get a tip. Gracie and Katie, they were not impressed with the driver's uh, display of his driving skills. They were looking forward to this van ride coming to a quick end. <laughs> yeah, yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah. Due to this crazy driving, it was next to impossible to get a shot with the camera out the windows to show the scenery. There was a lot of beautiful scenery. Um, unfortunately, we missed most of it as far as recording it or getting pictures. But I will tell you, if you do do the drive and you go with somebody that's a little bit slower, you'll probably see some beautiful sights and get some great pictures. We arrived in Loja, and yes, we were alive, so the driver did get his job accomplished, thankfully. So this beautiful little park was just about 25 yards from our Airbnb. We were so thankful to see this. We got to get out, stretch our legs, and let the dogs come out and uh, do their thing as well. So we're on day one in Loja, Ecuador. We woke up this morning out for a walk, and we're gonna explore. So come join Julie and I and our friend Kay as we explore Loja. Tons of beautiful bridges and waterfalls along the river in Loja. It appears to be a series of dams and waterfalls that they've built here to back up the water, to make little ponds and to control the water flow. So there's a park in Loja. They've reused a lot of tires it's amazing an ingenious use of recycled material. I also noticed throughout Ecuador the amount of parks and facilities for children. They really go out of the way to make sure that their children have play areas and can stay entertained and have exercise. You know, I give a uh, Thumbs up to Ecuador and their efforts to take care of their children and to provide them with these types of recreational activities. More tires. Making up this snake. Yeah, there is no shortage of parks. So a little bit about our friend Kate that is uh, with us. And you'll see her, or you've probably seen her in quite a few videos. Kay has been to about 61 countries. 
so she's a uh, world traveler. She's backpacked across most of Europe and Asia. She believes that Julie and I being down to two and a half suitcases each is overkill. She's traveling with about uh, a third of what Julie and I travel with as we're traveling around the world. So she's uh, got one backpack to get her through about the next four or five days. Here's an example of a pedestrian bridge here in Loja going over the river. It appears to be a very walkable, pedestrian friendly city. We really enjoyed our walk along the river going through Loja. Very pretty scenery. They really take care of this part of town. And Sunday is a peaceful day in Loja. It's a family day, so if you really want to get out and just be out there on your own without a lot of people out, Sunday is the day to do it. This appears to be a monument to Bolivar. It shows uh, different countries' plaques, so Bolivar, or Bolivia, Peru, Ecuador, all areas where Bolivar would have conquered and ruled, Colombia, Venezuela, and last and not least, Panama. Pretty uh, architecture, nice castle entrance, makes for a good impression. Well, we've been walking around putting miles on our soles of our shoes. Gracie's been in my backpack. It's time to let her walk around where she couldn't get into too much trouble. Her eyesight's failing her a little bit. She's 15 and a half years old. So this was her time to get out. So we're in Central Park in Loja. Mass is gonna be ending soon, it looks like, at the church here. We may try to see if we can go in there later. It's a pretty nice manicured park. Not many people in here though. Very, very quiet. This is one of the more pretty uh, parks here. A lot of old architecture, pretty church here. It is Sunday, so it's very, very quiet, but it's a, uh, feels like a historic area. Definitely worth uh, visiting. I would say if I were visiting Loja, I might look for an apartment or a place near here. Very tranquilo, as they say here, tranquil. Walking down Calle Lourdes is one of my favorite locations in Loja. Um, we must have went up and down the street a dozen times. Sometimes we detour just a little bit just to walk down it. Very pretty, and it feels like you're walking through a storybook. If you're going to go to Loja, take a stroll down Lourdes. So we thought the square was really pretty this afternoon, but it's really pretty at night too. We were really impressed on day one with Loja. We kind of stumbled and bumbled our way through in an unguided fashion. On day two, we're going to be met by Jonah Poma of Life in Loja, and he's going to give us the hidden history of Loja and a little bit more deep details. So I encourage you to check out our next video when Jonah joins us and gives us some of the history and other knowledge about Loja so that if you're coming this direction, you'll get a deeper understanding of this beautiful and ecologically friendly city. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe and follow Julie and I as we travel the world. And please make sure you check out the next couple videos if you're interested in Loja. Please consider putting Loja on your Ecuador visiting trip map. It's worth stopping in and checking out. And if you're an expat or a future expat looking for a place to live, Loja should be one of those cities you might want to consider. So more information on Loja will be coming so stay tuned, check out the next videos, please remember to subscribe. 
And by the way, we are on Facebook. So if you have Facebook and you'd like to follow Julie and I through that route as well, um, we do post things more often, uh, pictures and what we're doing from day to day. So if you want to see some things besides what we put on the video, search for our Facebook group, Warren and Julie, travel with us. And we'll look forward to having you on our next adventure. Thanks, everybody.